This week, we're off to explore the village known as Fife's Hidden Gem, with its historic buildings, beautiful harbour, and a special guest appearance by this spiky little dude. But before we can go and explore Dyser and its harbour, there's just a small matter in my commute home from Manchester. What could possibly go wrong? That's never a good sign on your five hour journey home. That is uh, something happened on the motorway. Oh dear, lots of brake lights coming on. And stop. Oh, an hour later and we've moved about a mile. This is, uh, this is always good fun. This motorway has behaved itself quite nicely for the last few months, but today it is making up for it. I want to get back home. I've got stuff to do. I want to be going to the lakes and Lancaster, but instead I'm going on a bit of a magical mystery tour. Uh, I've got no idea where this detour goes. Got no idea why it's here. Uh, yeah, wish me luck. This is taking forever. If we have no episode for you this week, I'm just going to show you like two hours of me sitting in traffic. This is horrendous. Just going to Billsboro, which I have never heard of. And later, much later, we are in Garstang, which uh, is another place that I've never been. <laughs> this is, I'm just going to start gibbering now because it's taken my mind off the fact that the traffic is moving at about two miles per hour and I've got about 200 miles to go. Well, it would not be interesting television to tell you how long it has taken me to get from there to here, but <laughs> we're just about to drop back onto the motorway. I don't want to get smug about it, but having sat through all that traffic jam, look at the traffic on the other side of the road. They've got that all to look forward to. Really, really glad I'm not heading south. I do this, uh, I do this every week for some unknown... Oh yeah, money. I do it for money. But we're just about to cross the border from England into Scotland. So every time I see this sign, I have a wee smile. And then I send Bex a text message saying, Scotland flag. And what can only be described as several hours later, we are crossing the River Forth back into the Kingdom of Fife. The stays and pillars on this bridge are usually lit up and it looks very impressive, but tonight, for some reason, it's not. So you'll just have to use your imagination. Anyway, I'm looking forward to getting home. This has been an incredibly long drive and we've got quite a lot of plans for the weekend. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. It is the morning after the long drive the night before and I'm heading into Kirkcaldy, but I'm going the scenic route along the coast and you guys are coming with me. This is actually a wee bit of the Fife Coast that we haven't shown you before. We've shown you the Weems Villages, which are behind me, and we've shown you Kirkcaldy, which is in front of me. But this is the wee bit in the middle, and this is Dysart. It's a place that has got an awful lot to see. Well, an awful lot to see. It's got some interesting history, if you like coal mining or pretty wee harbours or, uh, well, that's about it. I don't know why I said it's got an awful lot to see. I don't think it really has. This is Dysart, which is quite an interesting wee place. Once again, the Scottish weather is doing us proud. <laughs> it's blue skies and sunshine again. Somebody up there must like our videos, because we usually seem to get quite nice weather. Well, quite nice for November in Scotland. What I am going to try and do on this video is talk more slowly, because that is the biggest piece of feedback that I keep getting, that I talk too fast. So if I start to talk too fast, just all shout at your tellies, slow down, slow down. I've also been asked not to do rapid pans because they give people headaches. So now I'm going to show you something really cool that is over there. But instead of doing that and just spinning around and showing you it, what I'm going to do is do a proper professional cut. So it'll go from me over here saying there's something really cool over there, do you want to see it? Then it'll just edit around to that without the sort of headache inducing bit in the middle. The reason that big winch thing is there is because this is the site of the Francis Colliery, which was once one of the biggest collieries in Scotland. I'll give you some interesting facts about it a bit later on when I get back to the sign where they're all written down to make sure that I get them right. I've never been to this particular bit before. Uh, you can get down to the coast, I think, and along that beach. Shall we give that a try? It might be a bit, uh, a bit adventurous. Let's go for a bit of an adventure. And yes, I know I started to speak up a bit there as well. It's really difficult to talk <laughs> more slowly. You should hear me when I talk to people up here when we all get into full Fife mode. It goes, uh, it, you never understand. I don't understand most of what they say up here. You'd have no chance. <laughs> Comedy moment there. This is, is steeper and slippier than it looks and it's got weeds that try to trip you up. I'm gonna have to come back here with a proper camera. There's lots and lots of bird life. I just saw two herons. You don't usually see two herons. You usually see one on his own. I suppose they must uh, go about in pairs from time to time. I think that's the first time I've seen a pair of herons. And what an absolutely cracking view. 
and the view back up there towards the winch winding thing is uh, is pretty cool as well. I think this is probably all just coal bing this hill. It's just uh, rubbish that's taken out the coal mine and then dumped. They dumped quite a lot of stuff here. There's entire villages that have been lost under coal bings. You can see there the layers on layers of stuff that have been built up. I'm guessing that is all, uh, just as I said, stuff from the coal mine. Let's head along this way and see what we can see on this pretty little beat. I am walking along here looking at this thinking I wonder where the town's old dump was, <laughs> where the old rubbish tip is and uh, where we'd find all the old bottles. I wonder if it was dump it in the sea. Let's go and uh, let's go and find out. I am loving this. This is all owned by the coal authority i believe according to signs at the top and yeah that big winding thing does dominate the skyline it looks really cool especially against the blue sky background here's something that my dad told me i don't know if it's true or not because he does occasionally talk uh, nonsense but apparently you don't get flint around here so when you find flint like that that has come from the ballast of a ship which would be sort of makes sense because we're right next to the fourth and it was a very very busy maritime corridor back in the day. One thing to be oops, aware of, uh, this video is being shot out of sequence so the bit you're seeing next is the bit that I filmed first. So the bit you're seeing next, I'm back to my usual uh, rabbiting on quite quickly. Uh, sorry about that. I was saying that, then I looked up and uh, there's a thing. I wonder what that thing was. It's uh, been quite a big thing when it was uh, when it was built. Let's, let's go up and see if we can see. There's something very similar along at Weems. It was the base of an old gas tank for the uh, from the old gas works. They made gas from coal and then uh, you obviously use it to heat things. So I wonder if that's what this was. When you see it from up here, it's certainly quite a sturdy construction. I've got no idea what it was for. Possibly something to do with loading coal onto ships. That's unlikely because to load coal onto ships, you'd have to bring it down that big hill. Unless, uh, I don't know, I'm just gibbering now for the sake of it, but gibbering more slowly. A little bit further along the coast and yeah, that is all uh, that is all debris from something because it can't be natural because there is a log embedded in it sideways. So yeah, that is, uh, is that like bits of coal and stuff, do you think? It is, that's coal, that's pretty cool. I wonder how much money's worth of uh, energy if there is in this big hill. Do we think that's a big lump of coal or a bit wet? It's, uh, it's not, that, that is, that's definitely coal. Wow, <laughs> I've never seen uh, coal piled up like that. Just, this is the, obviously the excess waste that came out of the pit. And I keep hearing myself speeding up and then trying to slow down. I must slow down. More random stuff emerging from the cliff face. That looks like some rubber matting and bits of wire and stuff. Yeah, this is that's actually quite interesting. Nothing, uh, nothing worth taking home. No old bottles or uh, bottle stoppers or anything, but still, yeah, history is interesting. Look at that. Something uh, looks like an old pipe sticking out of the face and it's got stuff built up on top of it. I would not want to be standing under that if it, uh, if it was to fall. It's, oh, it's a big concrete, uh, concrete thing with a pipe in it. That's, uh, yeah, that's quite interesting again, if you like concrete things with pipes in them, which I appreciate maybe of niche appeal. That bit there looks like that the coal waste has been topped off with, uh, with soil. I guess that's what's happened there. You can see very clearly the line of uh, black stuff and then the line of soil coloured stuff. But you'll be pleased to hear that's almost the end of the amateur geology because we're almost, I think, at the harbour. The village is up there. I'm hoping I can get up past all these uh, sea defence boulders. There's a, there's a wee wall there and a wee arch and stuff. And I I think there's some steps along here. I hope there's some steps along here. There are steps there, but I don't think they're the easiest things to get to. So I'll see you again when I get to the top. I'm not going to try a fast forward because I'm going to end up fast forwarding flat on my face, I think. Oh look, there's me. Hello. Right, no fast forward, just take it easy. Heading over there, not very uh, elegantly, I don't think. Made it, yay. Right, now for a fast forward. And done, fast forward. Oh, there's a town trail round Dyer. Shall we do the town trail? 
Uh, probably not today, but you might see a lot of it just uh, wandering about aimlessly. I love that wee description of the of the building. It's got a harbour that was designed for exporting coal and a whale oil boiling house that was never operated because the Earl of Roslyn, the local landowner, objected to the smell. So he had it built to make money and then said, no, no, I don't want that money, that smells awful. And that over there is what's left of St Surf's Church. And it was also a fortress that had gun loops and cannon to defend against pirates and also the English. If you're wondering how I know that, I am reading it on that sign. I called Dyser a wee village, that's not fair. It's a royal borough and has been since 1535. Oh, footpath closed. You could have got right out to the end of that jetty, but you can't because they are, uh, they are doing work down there, as you can see. Now this is Dyser Harbour, which uh, as we saw on that sign back there, was used for the export of coal and salt, which made the area quite prosperous. Not sure what's with the painted wooden beams, I think it's probably art. That's a pretty cool wee house with lots of uh, boat names I think on it, and bits of boat and detritus from sea. That is really smart. This rather pretty little lane is called Hot Pot Wind, and it's how the sailors got from the harbour up into the town. And that's the way we're going now, following in their footsteps. Because I'm going to go back and bring Daisy along here. I wasn't going to, but I am now. Go get Daisy, come back here and have a play with the drone. The old rectory in that building over there that you can't see now, is now a monastery apparently, a Carmelite monastery. And this quite impressive looking building here is the Masonic Hall, presented by the Right Honourable the Earl of Roslyn in 1890, as you can all read for yourselves on the uh, on the inscription. That's quite nice, isn't it? It's uh, in a bit of shadow, unfortunately, designed by the pupils of the local primary school in 2010. So let's go and see what we have got in the way of local history. We've got a boat and we've got that winding thing from the mine and a wee house and some more wee houses and uh, yep, not sure. And then that tower that we were looking at. This is such a pretty wee place. Uh, we see that quite a lot because we don't tend to take you places that aren't apart from metal, obviously. More very nice buildings and uh, without panning too quickly, there's a thing over here. So we'll go and have a look at the thing. The thing says this was erected in memory of James Normand and this is actually part of the Normand Hall that was demolished in the 1990s and turned into this nice wee garden. There you are, that is the Normand Garden. You can sleep better tonight having seen that. I've just read this backwards. You're getting it forwards. At half past five, when the workers stopped for the day, you would see the high street teeming with humanity. And I'm now going to stop and start again. The workers pouring out onto the streets through the factory and mill gates and passing the cross in their hundreds. That's pretty smart, isn't it? Nice piece of, uh, of art you've got to look down at. This is the town's toll booth, and that sign up there does not lie. It was erected in 1576, ah, apparently. It was in a very, very bad state back in the 1990s, but Fife Council, unusually for Fife Council, put money to good use and uh, renovated it all, so it still survives into the future. Oh dear, the most annoying thing for content creation, I've got a squeaky shoe. I'm doing this all out of sequence, because I've done that a bit along there and shown you some of that. Now I'm going back to Daisy and then going back again. Now I could edit it all into one sort of coherent thing, but quite frankly I can't be bothered. Well, I don't know about you, but to me that looked like a really interesting graveyard beside that tower, so we're going to go and see if we can get in. <laughs> Thank you, little drone. It's just in behind all these really nice houses. There's a thing here called Sot Gurnal Wind. I'm hoping that might be the way in, or it might not, it might not be allowed in. It might all be uh, behind houses. Lots of a... Oh no, there's the way in. Well, if not the way in, it's definitely the way somewhere. Let's, uh, let's see if there's any keep out signs or anything similar. That says private property, so we can't go down that way. I think that's just in the back gardens, yep. So let's go to the gurnal, the uh, locked door. That's not any good. Let's keep going up this way. Uh, another locked door, equally not any good. And then there is a slightly kicked in locked door. Danger of death, that's got to be an electricity substation. 
no, I think it might have once been an electricity substation. Right, I don't think we can get in here. This is a terrible television, I know, but uh, I'm quite disappointed. I've come up the wee wind, and there is the original... Oh, look at that. Two tabletop tombstones, and also uh, a very serious... You know, not getting in the fence. Let's see if there's another way to get in. Unfortunately, there is just a big wall down here. That is a real shame. I hate things like that, where it should be open and accessible and uh, able to be explored, and it isn't. That's obviously the main gate there, but it is, as you can see, padlocked. This is, uh, this is not fair. The wee sign over there says it's St Surf's Cemetery and it's run by Fife Council. Now, I've got in touch with Fife Council about access to places before and they have never answered. I am not impressed with Fife Council, as you can probably tell. This harbour is quite cool. It is from the mid-1800s and it was carved out of solid rock, so they'd have somewhere to load their ships, no matter the state of the tide, because it's got lock gates over there, so you could load coal into ships and then uh, get out again and get as much turnover as possible, do it as quickly as possible and therefore make as much money. Along where we were earlier at the coal mine, apparently there is a tunnel that goes all the way from there to here so they can get the coal from the face to the ships as quickly as possible. I can't see any sign of that and there's nothing written down but uh, I read that on a sign somewhere else. Came down to see the lock gates but they are gone. Boo! I'm wondering if that's the old whale processing building. We'll go to the other side and see if there's a slipway, because that's a clue. They used to drag them onto the slipway and then gut them, chop them up, and then melt them down. If any of you recognise this harbour from somewhere, apart from knowing it's in Dysart, it apparently featured in Outlander, probably playing somewhere that wasn't Dysart, I'm guessing. Oh, that's not the tunnel that goes to the coalface, but it is a wee tunnel. Let's go for a wee, uh, a wee look. I don't think it'll go anywhere very exciting because it is heading towards Kirkcaldy, which could never be called very exciting. And my creaky shoe is still creaking. That explains the wooden poles that we saw earlier. They're not just a bunch of painted wooden poles, they're called sea beams because they've got to have a pretentious title. I've actually come a little bit away from Dysart. We've come up the hill a wee bit because this thing was on the skyline and I thought I would come up and see what it was. Uh, it is obviously some sort of tower, a martello tower or something, be a ducat, no idea. But what I've also found walking up here is uh, it's right next to that. So uh, <laughs> I promise you, I didn't know that was there. We might go in there for a wee look. I don't know if that was a ducat, but it certainly got some dudes sitting on the top. Somewhat. Now oh, that'll be time for our word of the day. This is obviously an old part of town, some really, really nice houses. And because they're on top of a hill, they must have once had a really, really good view. Now all they've got a view of is that over there. This is unsurprisingly Dysart Cemetery, and there are no Commonwealth War Grave signs on the gates, you will notice. But guess what the first thing that you see when you walk in is? Uh, let's go up here. Don't worry, we're not going to do a massive graveyard episode. If you want that, it might be over on Places for the Past. This is uh, Corporal Westwood. Scottish Borders, 90, oh, First World War, so it's older than I thought it was. I said I wasn't going to show you anything else in this graveyard, but you'll never believe what I've just seen. Let's go and meet a new little friend. Hello, little hedgehog. Oh, that's okay, it's okay. You don't have to roll yourself up into a wee ball. I am uh, absolutely not going to uh, come anywhere near you. <laughs> You don't see many hedgehogs, that is so cool. I thought it was a squirrel at first, but if it's a squirrel, it's a squirrel in a very spiky fur coat. Maybe a squirrel wearing a hedgehog coat. It's okay, I'm going to leave you to go about your hedgehoggy business. You look like you were on a mission there and I have waylaid you. This is a little addendum because I have walked out of that graveyard and come down the hill about 100 metres and <laughs> looked to my left over a wall and seen this. This is really not far from the other one. And it looks like it's of a similar age. Let's uh, let's find out. This is from 1906. It is. It's a different graveyard, not far from the other graveyard. But it's this. I, I am now confused as to why this is actually here. Unlike the one up the road, it's uh, it's a bit more higgledy and piggledy. Most of the stones here have fallen over. I'm guessing it's not looked after by anyone anymore. It's possibly owned by the people that own the barony behind me. That's the barony there. When we were down on Dysart High Street, we saw that inscription that talked about men streaming out of the mills and the factories. I'm wondering if that was one of them. Lots and lots of smashed up stones. I've never seen so many in one place. I have no idea 
what the story is, but it kind of starting to look a bit deliberate. And heading back down towards the seaside from the cemetery, we pass this, which is obviously the town's war memorial. Uh, all of these gave their lies for king, and I'm going to guess it says, and country. Yes. And it's the role of honour, and no ranks or regiments, just names. I like that. It's much less sort of uh, egalitarian. People are just lissies. And I'm going to guess that facing it is from the Second World War, although there are an awful lot of names on that. Second World War memorials are usually much smaller than First World War in terms of numbers of dead. Let's go for a look. No, this is First World War, and I'm guessing down the bottom there, Second World War, and it is to the glory of God and in grateful memory of those of this church. Which church? That's probably, that's probably that church, I would guess. If there's another graveyard here, I'm going to give up because <laughs> I've done enough wandering about graveyards for one day. Oh dear, the tides come in and ruined my continuity because it looks nothing like it did yesterday. No blue skies, no sunshine and uh, a high tide. Just pretend that it looks the same as it looked yesterday. If you don't tell anyone about my dreadful continuity, I won't tell anyone you waste your time watching this nonsense. So we have come from down at the harbour all the way up that ramp and then all the way along this footpath, which again is where the fishermen would have gone from the harbour up into Kirkcaldy, or up to Path Head technically, I think, rather than Kirkcaldy. And that there apparently is more art, like the sticks that are out there sticking out of the, out of the ground. It's, uh, yeah, I've got no idea. It's uh, there. Does that look very artistic to you? It's uh, striking me as a hole in the fence, but uh, no, no, it's art. And at the top of the hill, we are somewhere where we came on one of our very, very first videos before we knew what we were doing. Not that I'm implying that I know what I'm doing now. It's a shame that De Niro has been sadly absent from this week's episode because he does love this part. It's also a shame that Bex has been sadly absent from this week's episode, but she does insist on going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I like working three days a week. We're heading along now towards Ravens Creek Castle, which is quite impressive, and one for our long-term visitors. It's, it was in our first or second episode. So yeah, it'll be our first ever repeat. It's only taken us like two years to actually have to go back to the same place twice. And we don't have to, it's just on the way that I'm heading. I love the sound of leaves crunching underfoot, but it doesn't half play havoc with the audio. <laughs> When I listen to this back, all you can hear is uh, leaves crunching underfoot. That's us done for this wee adventure. That is Ravenscraig Castle, which, as you can see, unfortunately, you still can't get into. Oh, well, that is as close as you're gonna get. And that is it for this week. We will see you again next week for more. <laughs>